to join you for a few jars in the nearest hostelry. <laughs> yeah, hurry. Hey, you know, that car does well for its age. Oh, it's a real good liquor. 50,000 miles and never had a tea cork. Of course, uh, you can't get this model anymore now. It's what they call obstinate. <laughs> ah, but it looks in good condition, though. Not like that taxi of Higginbottom's, a real broken down old thing, that is. Well, what can you expect? It's so negligible. Just lets you go to rack and ruination. How he gets that test as if he gets every year is beyond human consumption. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Who was that, Pete? It's that fellow who just pulled up in a van. It's Pat's new friend, that wet ninny Humphrey Brocklebank. Excuse me. <laughs> Could you direct me to Lilac Avenue? Oh, no, he's not going round to our house, I hope. I've managed to keep him away up till now. Blast it, he's recognized me. <laughs> hey, that van, Pete. It says cleansing departments on the side. This is something to do with insanitation. <laughs> oh, well, well, what a pleasant surprise. I thought it was you when I spotted the kilt. It is Mr. Sinclair, is it not? Uh, no, it's my mar in law in a miniskirt. <laughs> Oh, I see we have a comedian with us. <laughs> How do you do, sir? Uh, oh, flattered, I'm sure. Uh, the name's Henry Whittle. You can call me Harry. And I'm Humphrey Brocklebank. Right, I'll call you Hump. <laughs> <laughs> I was just asking uh, Pete about your van, Hump. Are you on the corporation or do you work for a living? Ha, ha, ha. You know, it's thanks to people like me that you get your streets clean and your dustbins emptied. Get away. I wouldn't have thought with your bill you went in for cat and dustbins around. I should have thought you'd have had a struggle just lifting the lids off. <laughs> well, I happen to be the senior clerical assistant in the cleansing department office. Oh, lifting heavy pens up and down. <laughs> yes. No, fiddle paddle. Hey, what's your language? This old gent's pleasant. Uh, that'll do now, Harry. Uh, are you aware to our place, Humphrey? Oh, yes. I've never called there before, as you know. You and I met at Mrs. Billington's, but Mrs. Clitheroe kindly invited me round to your house today to talk about the Good Neighbour League. Uh, Humphrey's the secretary, Harry. Oh, is he? Uh, uh, what's the idea of this Good Neighbour League, Hump? Is it uh, lending each other Sunday joints to make gravy and putting each other to bed when you're booze-like? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, we help underprivileged people and disperse sums of money for charitable purposes. Oh, I see. Have you met Pete's young grandson, Jim, yet? Oh, that is a pleasure still to come. Why? Well, uh, I don't know how much charitable money you've got in your kitty, but young Jim will relieve you of it before you've had time to take your ball of that off. <laughs> and the dustman found it for me when he trod on it. <laughs> Shut up, I'm leaving this note for your Susan. Now then, dearest, is it next Saturday you're going? I had to laugh. He upset the dustbin over his own head. I am sure you said it would be your friend Irene's wedding next Saturday and Sunday. Not not Saturday and Sunday, the wedding. That's how long you'll be away in Liverpool. I'll miss you. Hey, he had tea leaves all down the back of his neck. <laughs> Sorry, I can't come if it's next Saturday, the wedding, as I'm going to my mum and dad's. Not their wedding, they've had one. <laughs> They're at Holiday Cottage to take them some money. Listen, Alfie. I'll ring Irene's brother about not going and tell him I love you. No, not I love Irene's brother. You love her dad? Yes, yeah, don't be funny. Yeah, I'm going now. Right, I'll see you to the door. Come on. Right, don't forget that note. It's important. I'll see she gets it. Stop worrying. Yeah, I'm off now, Jim. Hey, hey who's he? Who's who? That fellow's just got out of that van. He's looking at your garden gate. I mean, well, what does it say on it? Beware of the sister. We haven't got a dog. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that van from the cleansing department. You what? 
He hasn't come to wash me neck, has he? <laughs> you don't talk that. It's a corporation, you know, street sweepers and the dustmen. Oh, I see, dustmen. But he's not a dustman. Uh, anyway, he looks more like the boss. Pardon me, I'm looking for a Mrs. Clitheroe. Oh, heck, he's looking for me, ma'am. That dustman must have told him what happened. Well, it's nothing to do with me, I'm off. Oh, no, Alfie, stop and help me to get rid of him. He'll go away if he thinks he's at the wrong house. Just back me up in everything I say. You get the idea. Mm, all right, but the day after I marry your sister, we're both moving to Canada. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm looking for the Clitheroes. Uh, Clitheroes? Clitheroes? Did you hear that, Seamus? <laughs> Somebody called Clitoros. Yeah, uh, th this is the Clitoros. Go, my lag! <laughs> uh, this is my brother, Seamus. As you can see, he's a dancer. <laughs> We're all Flanagans. Nice to have met you. Come along, Seamus. It is time to mix the pig food. Because <laughs> the family will be home soon. <laughs> what are you talking? <laughs> What are you talking about, me jeepers? <laughs> Look, this is number 33, is it not? Oh, no, no, we're not sure. Are we, Seamus? I don't know, Big Lara. <laughs> it says 33 on the gate. Ah, uh, well, it may say 33, but that could be wrong, you see. You see, next door it says 35. Now, tell me, where's... 34. <laughs> Surely it's across the street. Ah, uh, well, if it is across the street, you're on the wrong side. <laughs> I should try over there. Now, look here. Oh, you're here, Alfie. Hey, yes, Susan, me dad. Me dad. Me girlfriend. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, can I help you, sir? Well, I'm not sure. I'm looking for Mrs. Same as me, boy. Why not be after taking me darling sister Bridget into the house? Bridget? You said Susan. Susan Bridget. The Rose of Trilly. <laughs> uh, uh, Seamus, be after showing her that note you wrote. Yeah, I can't. I'm late, the jam. Oh, hey, Susan, I'm not that. It's just me, Alfie. I thought the silly talk was familiar. Oh, what have you been up to with Jimmy? Dave, tell you, I've left you a note. I'll see you tomorrow. Cheerio, Bridget. Dear Susan. Now, look here. This is most confusing. I was definitely told number 33. Now, then, what's the matter? Oh, I... Ah, tis the old washerwoman has said. <laughs> the door is round the back, Broidy. Oh, huh? I'll smack your face in a minute. Hello, Humphrey. Oh, you're here at last, Mrs. Clitheroe. What have you been up to with Mr. Brocklebank? Oh, sorry, Mammy, it was a mistake. I didn't know he was a man. Uh, a man you knew, I mean. Mr. Brocklebank and I are organising a walk for the Good Neighbour League. This is my son, Jimmy Humphrey. And, and my daughter, Susan. Hello. Oh, what a pleasure <laughs> to meet someone so pretty. Yes, I do it with that soup on the telly, you know. <laughs> They're all set for the children's walk on Saturday afternoon. If we are blessed with fine weather, we should swell our funds quite considerably. Yes. These walks certainly seem to be very popular. But ten miles is a long way, though. <laughs> That's why I asked Mr. Whittle to assist with his car, to pick up stragglers, etc. Yes, and Father's agreed to be on duty at the halfway checkpoint. That's right. And I was surprised at the alacrity with which James went out looking for sponsors just now. Yeah, that's a new departure. Our Jimmy working for charity. It's usually the other way around. What did you tell him? Oh, just the way the sponsor idea works. The sponsors each pay him sixpence per mile. The more miles he walked, the more money he would get from them. Well, this walk should be quite a success, judging by the number of people we've got willing to help. Oh, yes, the children and Mrs. Billington and the vicar. All I want is another vehicle for picking up stragglers. Get in there, you old brat. Go on. Get in. Stop shoving me. Pick on somebody your own size, you great big giraffe. <laughs> What's going on? I'm sorry, Mrs., but when he started at me with his funny remarks in the street, I did try to keep my temper. I even counted up to ten. Oh, I bet that took some doing. <laughs> what was that? I say, it took some doing, getting this list of sponsors. 
Look, ma'am, I've got ten names. Oh, very good. Let me see. Oh, no. What's up? They've all said they'd pay me sixpence a mile. Well, nearly all. Yeah, but listen to who they are. Grandad Sinclair, Wacker Whittle, Foghorn Fred. Oh, Jimmy. <laughs> Foghorn Fred? Who's that? I'll tell you. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> I, I forgot to rub it out and put your real name down. Somebody should rub you out for good. He stuck my name down without even asking me. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Higginbottom. Oh, mm, this is Mr. Brocklebank, who's organising the walk. This is Mr. Higginbottom, Humphrey. Ah, oh, yes, pleased to meet you, sir. Only this afternoon I was talking to your good lady. Good lady? It means your wife, who you call the old butler. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind what I call her. So you've been talking to my missus, have you? Uh... Uh, Brocklebank. Humphrey Brocklebank. Oh, well, with all of our problems. <laughs> what did you want to talk to her about? Our charity walk on Saturday for the Good Neighbour League. We need another vehicle for picking up stragglers. I thought you'd help us with your taxi. Huh? Oh, well, that doesn't sound bad. I mean, uh, all that mileage and there's bound to be a lot of waiting time. Oh, no, no, no. It's for charity, Mr Higginbottom. I'm expecting you to do it for nothing. What? Do you think I'm round the twist? <laughs> I've got something else on Saturday afternoon. Uh, yes, your good lady told me. You were taking her and her mother to the seaside for the day. Oh, no, I'd forgotten. Oh, the old witch is coming. <laughs> All the way to Blackpool and back. And the most I can hope for is two shandies. <laughs> She'll be nutting at me all day long, the old backseat driver. <laughs> Well, your good lady... Don't keep calling her that. <laughs> your wife said she'd gladly forgo the trip if you help us with your taxi. Oh, won't Dracula's daughter be coming with me? No, she's going to see her sister. Right, I'll do it. Oh, good. Your son Oswald is taking part in the walk, too. You what? That Ozzy walking. <laughs> the only way they'll get him to do ten miles is to roll him. Jimmy, that'll do. Oh, it's all right, missus. My Ozzy's not all taught like some kids I could mention. I wouldn't be surprised if he came in first in that walk. Give over. The only way Ozzy could win that would be on his granny's broomstick. <laughs> Jimmy, I shan't tell you again. Well, I'm sorry, ma'am, but I'll show him on that walk. I'll, I'll, I'll walk that fast. I'll pass myself coming back. <laughs> well, confidence isn't a bad virtue, James, but don't count your chickens before they're hatched. You won't. I'll have a whole blooming poultry farm when I've raised that fat old tortoise, Ozzy. <laughs> right, that does it. I'll tell Ozzy what you've said and he'll see you off, big mouth. You want to bet? I don't want to bet with you. Well, bet me granddad then. Go on, bet him ten bob who wins. Right, right, I will. You're on, Pete. Ted Bob. Wait a minute, I haven't said a word yet. What's up, Grandad? Have you no confidence in me? Ah, but ten bob's a lot of money. Ah, it is when you're certain to lose it. I mean, if you back your grandson to beat my Aussie, you'll back Godfrey Wynn to be the next world heavyweight champion. <laughs> All right, Higgy, you're on. I will bet you ten bob that old Jimmy will beat your Aussie. Done. Yes, and when I win for you, Grandad, you'll enjoy drinking that five bob's worth of beer, won't you? I will that here. Yeah. What about the other five, Bob? By Saturday night, I'll be rolling in money. Oh, you mean sharing the winnings of the bet? Oh, that's only peanuts. I mean, the real loot, the gravy, the bread, man, the bread. <laughs> what are you talking about? I've worked it out, ma'am. Ten sponsors pay me sixpence a mile for walking ten miles. That's uh, two pound ten. Marvellous. I can just buy Charlie Thompson's bike with it, Mum. <laughs> James, what are you talking about? The money you raise goes towards the Good Neighbour League charity funds. What? All of it? Yes, James. That money is to help the poor. Well, Charlie Thompson's poor. <laughs> That's why he's flogging his bike. <laughs> Jimmy, this is the right place, then. 
I wasn't sure whether you said I had to meet you in Green Lane outside the Black Swan or Blackburn Road outside the Green Bushes, so I tossed two heads of Black Swan tails of Green Bushes. <laughs> but we're outside the Red Lion in Whiteside Road. Yeah, me penny fell down the grate. <laughs> yeah, well, that seems sensible for you. Anyway, get the motorbike started and let's be off. Where are we going? I'm taking you on a mystery trip, Alfie. You'll enjoy it. Come on, hurry up before the others catch up. Right, yeah. Well, what are this? The other walkers, lads. So, some lads are following me, and I don't want them to see me riding. And to see where we're riding, because then it won't be a mystery. Mm. Okay, I'll start it up. It'll go with a good kick. Well, if it doesn't, you will. <laughs> there we go. See, if you're in such a hurry, why didn't you ask me to pick you up at your house? Because there's nobody in. Oh, I say. No, I don't. Y you'd be in if I, if, I, if I was picking you up. How <laughs> could I be in when I'm here? Oh, come on. I'm stupid. <laughs> yeah, I've forgotten you, but hey, wait a minute. You wouldn't be here. Neither would you if the stork hadn't made a mistake. You'd be on... <laughs> You'd be on Blackpool Beach with the other donkeys. <laughs> right, Alfie. We'll sit over there near the window. Oh, what sort of a mystery trip's this? We drive five miles straight up the road and come into a cafe. We're not on a mystery trip yet. Got to see me granddad and Beaky Billington first to check in. Give him a message, Jimmy. But your granddad? Is he coming here then? No, I'm going to him as soon as we've had some food. He's only up the road round the corner. Mm, why didn't we drive there first? Because I don't want him to see me on your bike, of course. I mean, he doesn't think it's safe. Or he's worried I might get hurt. Well, I don't worry about Susan getting hurt riding on a pillion. Of course not. She's only a girl. <laughs> it's funny you haven't noticed that, Alfie. Well, of course. Of course I've noticed she's a girl. She couldn't be a boy with a shape that she... I mean, with her thick... I mean, she's got long hair. Boys, have order, please? Oh, Beltro. Oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, not you, Mr. Waiter. Um, <laughs> he's trying to be funny, saying his sister's a girl. I mean, she's a bloke. <laughs> no, of course not. I mean, she's she's a girl, but but she looks like a bloke. Yeah. No. <laughs> see, shut up. He asked me if I knew his sister was a girl, and I did. No, no, I'm... I'm I said my granddad wouldn't let a boy go on his bike, but it was all right for a girl. But he doesn't seem to know which is which. I tell him no, but your granddad didn't say a boy couldn't go on. He said you couldn't. Well, what's he, then? I'm the brother called Susan. No, you're not. <laughs> you're the sister called Jimmy. I mean, I mean, she is. Alfie, why don't you come and have a chat with our biology master? <laughs> Look, I'm in hurry. Now, would either of you ladies care to order? Well, I'll have egg and chips. How about you, Auntie Alfie? Oh, I'll have sausage. See, I'll help you. Right. One egg, one sausage. If you want to wash your hands, you're upstairs. If you can make your minds up which door to use. Very funny. That's you and your daft carry-on. Oh, I wish I'd never come on your blooming mystery trip. Yeah, anyway, where, where are we going? Well, where would you like to go? I don't know. Right, we'll go there. Where? Where you said. Unless you've changed your mind. What are you on about? I haven't changed my mind. Right, we'll go there then. But you haven't said where it is. I don't, I don't know where it is. It was you who wanted to go there. I, I, I wanted to go where? Have you forgotten already? <laughs> I think you ought to see a doctor, Alfie. You'll be seeing a doctor in a minute when I hit you. No, no, then. We don't want any violence in here. Do your written outside after you've eaten this food. One egg and chips. One sausage and chips, they are. Yeah, I'm sorry, mister, but you see he's being cheeky. Oh, heck, they're coming. Mister, will you put me egg and chips back in the oven? I can see them walking round the bend. You can see you. The other boy, boy, birds. Uh, the birds are very pretty. <laughs> but the birds are walking round the bend. <laughs> are they? They must be tired. 
before we all go around a bend, why well, put your food back in the oven because you've seen some birds? Um, ah, ah, well, you reminded me. I have to fly. <laughs> <laughs> remembered my granddad's leaving in two minutes and uh, I have to give him a message. Wait there, I'll fix it. Right, Jim, son. Mrs. Billington stamped your card. There. So off you go back now. Oh, I'm proud of you, Jimmy. Keep it up now. Don't worry, Grandad. Fat Oz, he'll never catch me. Look at him waddling along at the back there, like a stuffed duck. Well, never mind talking. Off you go. The others are only 200 yards behind you. Yes, but wait till I get back round that bend and get me second wind. <laughs> they won't see the way I go, I hope. <laughs> Ta-ra! Well, cheerio then, Jim. Good luck now. Right, Grandad. Off we go. Quick march. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left. There was a soldier, a Scottish soldier. He had to leave the town because his kill fell down. Hello there, Jim Lass. Are you on your way back already? You must have been going like a fine dustman. Well done indeed, James. Oh, no. Hello, Mr. Brucklebank and uh, Mr. Whittle. Oh, you look remarkably fresh, James, after five miles. I hope you can keep it up. Keep it up? Well, if you'd like to tie your car to me braces, I'll give you a tow. Well, you sound very confidential, Jim, but you've only done the first half, remember. The second half is a horse with a different collar. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll keep going. I had a big breakfast. Two plates of corny flakes. Four rations of bacon and a pint of cow juice. I'm as fit as a fishmonger as Moggy. <laughs> oh, oh, James, how very whimsical. <laughs> uh, now, come along, Mr. Whittle. We're dropping behind the rest of the walkers. Yes, all right, Hum. I'll be with you in a jaffa. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Jim, uh, we're picking up them what drops behind. Uh, the strugglers like. <laughs> yes, sir. I thought Ben uh, Higginbottom was doing that as well. And Mr. Higginbottom has stationed himself on the main road, halfway back. Why, is there a pub there? <laughs> hey, wait a minute. You mean he's on the road where we'll be driving, riding, uh, walking? Yeah, that's right. Uh, you'll spot his old Japoli on the way back. <laughs> yeah, and he'll spot ours, mine, and uh, me. Yes, and he probably won't be too pleased to see you, James, if you're still leading the field. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll dodge him. Uh, go around him, I mean. Pass him. We're walking backwards and then he'll think I'm coming instead of going. <laughs> oh, oh, James, the things you say. <laughs> He's bound to see you on your way back. He want to bet. <laughs> Alfie's going on that mystery trip the long way home. Pardon? Um, it's a long way home, so I'd better get going. Ta-ra, Mr. Whittle. I've enjoyed the chin waggle. So that's it. If Ozzy's collapsed on the road, give him a glass of water. Right in the clock. <laughs> oh, thank goodness, Jim, we're back on the main road. We must be all right now. All right now, you big twit. Oh, yes. I know a detour, a country road, back to where I met you. It'll only take 20 minutes. That was three and a half hours ago, you clock. I didn't know we'd run out of petrol. I had a leak. Yes, in your head. The rain's got in, your brain's waterlogged. <laughs> Don't you be cheeky. You've only had to walk the six miles. I've had to push the bike as well. And you've got my coat over your head. My shirt's soaking. Oh, stop moaning. Come on. We can't have far to go now. We've been walking for three... Oh, no. Alfie Hall, you nutcase. Why didn't your father send you back and get a budgie? <laughs> you know where we are? I said you were on the main road. Look, there's a cafe where we had our... <laughs> exactly. For three and a half hours, you've had me walking in a dirty great circle. Oh, dear. 
Well, I'm, I must have turned round and gone right when I should have gone left. That was wrong. Right was. Left was right. Not right, right, right. Oh, I'm sorry, Jimmy. It's not your fault, Alfie. I'm to blame. No, no, Jim. I mean, you didn't know right was wrong and left was right. The proper, I mean. No, but I knew you weren't right. You never have been. We should have left you at that farm and borrowed a nanny goat. <laughs> I, can't, I can't blame you for being cross. I mean, especially since we're only in this trouble because you were kind enough to take me on a mystery trip. Yes, and I won't get half the winnings now. Five bob I've lost. Well, you see, I've, I've said I'm sorry. I can't... What winnings? For beating Ozzy in the walk. What? 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 What's all that? Uh, it's all this rain. It makes me feel like a duck. <laughs> hey, there's a car coming. Wave him down and I'll get a lift. What about, what about, what about me? You don't want a lift. You've got a motorbike. Oh, of course. I forgot. Don't be daft. It won't go. I need filling up. You need filling in. Stop! Stop! Whoa! Alfie, lift your trouser leg up. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 stop him, Jim. You'll be all right now. Oh, heck. Wave it on again. It's Mr. Higginbottom's taxi. Too late. He spotted us. There he is, Pete, and Alfie's with him. The tunnock twit. Alfie, remember, I've only just met you. You are? I've only just met you. Where have you been? You've only just met me. Hear that, Grandad? I've just met Alfie. Oh, James, we thought you were lost. We've all been terribly worried. Yes, I was worried we might find you. That'll do, Higgy. <laughs> Jimmy, what happened? The rest of the kids finished the walk over an hour ago. Would you believe me if I told you I was on my second time round? <laughs> Don't be funny. By the way, how did you come to find him, Alfie? Well, I, I was waiting for him at two o'clock on my back. Ah, my leg! <laughs> on his legs to walk, but he didn't know the walk was only for kids. Anyway, I'll uh, see you tomorrow, Alfie. Come on, Grandad. Let's go. Just a minute. I smell a rat here. Oh, I thought Ozzy was at home. <laughs> You'll go home in a minute on a stretcher. Now, please, let us keep our tempers. After all, it's a great relief to us all that James is safe. You speak for yourself. Uh, just a minute. And you keep quiet, Jimmy. Alfie, why were you meeting him at two o'clock? To take him on me back on a mystery trip. Oh, oh, only I... when we came up the road to that cafe so he could give you the message. Well, I don't understand. Well, I do. Aye. And I've got the message as well. You cheating little scoundrel. Oh, Grandad, it was a joke. Ha 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 ha. A joke. Ha ha ha. I thought it would make you laugh. Oh, it'll make me laugh. <laughs> All the time I'm watching your Grandad belt you. <laughs> oh, heck, Mr. Brucklebank, this was your idea to help your neighbour, wasn't it? Well, yes, it was. Well, neighbour, help. <laughs> Those involved with the Clitheroe Kid this week were Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Danny Ross as Alfie Hall, Diana Day as Susan, Tony Melody as Higginbottom, Brian Truman as Mr. Whittle, and Colin Edwin as Humphrey Brockleback. The recorded program was written by James Casey and Frank Roscoe, produced by James Casey, and starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. I bet you're all thinking that I got smacked. Well, when I got home, my granddad grabbed me and bent me over his knee. But Mr. Brocklebank said, Please, Mr. Sinclair, I must protest. I cannot bear to see a child receive corporal punishment. So my granddad sent him in the other room while he belted 